live with Sheik Alfan Al Aisri. On, on, let's connect. Let's connect. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to your Ramadan radio program, Let's Connect. We'll be connected together throughout the blessed month of Ramadan to establish the most important connection in our life and be the best of who we are. With you is your host, Reem Audia. And with us is the Honorable Sheikh Alfan Al-Aisri, who will be taking us through this wonderful journey. With us also is the sound engineer, Safiya Al-Habsi. We also welcome you to call in live with your comments or questions at the number... Two four six zero two zero five eight. We also have another number, two four six nine four three one five. Welcome to the program, Sheikh Alfan. Assalamu alaikum and welcome. Wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan bik. Sheikh Alfan, yesterday we spoke about what it means to be a better person. Yeah. And you mentioned how it's a journey of growth and how we should grow in all aspects of our lives. You pointed out to the eight areas, being our spirituality. Yeah. Health and energy, mm-hmm. our mental knowledge, our talent and skills, yeah. our relations, social contribution, and leisure and pleasure. Indeed, yeah. You also mentioned it's important to achieve balance in these faculties and to push ourselves outside the comfort zone. Absolutely. To achieve extraordinary goals and to start small step by step. Indeed, yeah. Now, I also asked you how we can sustain, and you mentioned let's keep a record and also to celebrate the achievements throughout our journey. Mm-hmm. You mentioned the concept of that whatever we can do and should do and are not doing, it's an opportunity to take action. My goodness, you're a good student. You, <laughs> you've captured all the points. Learning from you, mashallah. Thank you, thank you, yes. <laughs> now, towards the end of our conversation, we touched upon how we can seek support from Allah. Yes. And you mentioned that we actually need Allah more than we think we do. Yes. And this brings us to our topic today, which is about our relationship with Allah. Yeah. So first of all, Sheikh Alfan, we want to learn what is the purpose of this relationship. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbi. Our relationship with Allah, uh, in understanding that relationship, I think we need to go deeper than what we think we know and what we think ought to be. Mm-hmm. First of all, we have to accept the fact that we are in his kingdom and we are part of his kingdom. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, 99.9% of who we are is actually under the control, under the guidance, under the the influence, under the leadership, under the, the control of Almighty Allah. Mm-hmm. The way, starting from the way we were created... Almighty Allah says as an example, the main things we need to understand Allah and then understand ourselves. So let us see how Allah tells us how to understand Him. Okay. To understand Allah is to look at what He created, His creation. You know when you look, for example, at a magnificent building or you look at a magnificent car or a magnificent watch or something mm-hmm. and it is so immaculate, so perfect in every way, the, the one thing you say, first of all, you command the designer and the manufacturer who were able to do it for the knowledge, for the experience, for the wisdom, for the skills in doing that. Almighty Allah then guides us and He says, Glorify the name of your Lord who is high above. Mm-hmm. For, he talks about four, four, four elements. The one who created. And then perfected. And the one who proportioned Fahada. And then he guided to that mm-hmm. proportion. Four, four qualities that Allah talks about himself. Created, perfected, proportioned and guided. Let us now come and look at how that is relevant to us as human beings. How many bones do we have in our body? It's about 300 and plus, 360 or so. Mm-hmm. These bones, the way they grow, they it is basically a, gr- a bone growing. But then, who who commanded a bone on my finger to grow to that length and stop? And then who commanded the bone on my thigh to grow mm-hmm. to about one foot and stop? And who commanded my bone on my head, the skeleton, to, 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 the, to grow in a, a rounded shape and then stop? And who commanded my ribs to grow in a curved shape and stop? 
let us look at different types of hair that we have. Although the body is the same, Mm -hmm. the nutritions are the same, the nourishment is the same, but the growth is different. Let us take the eyelashes. Who commanded the eyelashes at the top to grow and curl up? And then after less than one inch to stop. And the eyelashes at the bottom. Let us take the eyebrows. Let us take the, the hair that grows on our hair. The facial hair. Let us look at the, the, the hair that grows on our head. The beard. Different ones. They grow to different proportions and stop. Let us take the hair that grows in our nostrils. Imagine if the proportion was to be disturbed. And the hair that grows on my head, the length of it was to grow on my nostrils. I'd be suffocated with the hair that I have in my nose. I can't breathe. But yet, Almighty Allah is commanding each and every aspect of our body, created, and then perfected, and then He said guided, proportioned, and then guided. So in everything you see on this universe, you see that the meticulous creation of Almighty Allah is at work. Mm-hmm. From an atom all the way to cosmos. Once we appreciate that, then we realize, in actual fact, we cannot survive without Him. We cannot survive without His guidance. We cannot survive without His supervision. We cannot survive without His mercy. We cannot survive without His love. Let us take now a human being. How long can I survive without breathing? Not more than three minutes. Not more than three minutes. Mm. Three minutes, that is the maximum. If I can extend, there are people who have learned to master that maximum is about 20 minutes. But three minutes is an average. Maximum is half an hour. After half an hour of no oxygen, my brain begins to die. Mm. Yet, the oxygen that we have on air, 21%, is just enough for us to breathe that oxygen and to be able to survive. So once I understand that in actual fact I'm in true need of Almighty Allah all the time because when I go to sleep the only thing that keeps me awake is the autopilot in my body that is functioning without my authority, without my command, without my control, without my intervention. Then I realize, you know what, I need Him all the time. Mm -hmm. This earth, the way it revolves. The sun, the distance of the sun from earth. If the sun was to come only one meter closer to earth, would burn. If it was to be away, only one meter away from the sun would freeze. So everything is happening in so, in a meticulous manner, in perfection. That is what Allah talks about, perfection in everything. Mm. Once I understand that that is the relationship I have with Allah, then the second part that I understand is that small as I am, as a human being, as a creature, there are creatures that are far, far bigger than me that are more far powerful than me, that live longer than me, that have got more resilience than me. Yet Almighty Allah chose us human beings to be His agents on earth. And He actual fa- in actual fact in the Quran, Allah says that, I have honored you above many, many, many creatures. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ In reality, we honored the uh, offsprings of Adam. وَحَمَلْنَاهُمْ فِي الْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ And we, trans- we transported them and the land as well as on, on the sea. الطيبات, and you gave them provisions of, of good provisions. And in actual fact, we elevated them, we preferred them above many, 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 many creatures. Small as we are, Almighty Allah says, وَسَخَّرَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِعًا And He has made subservient to you as mankind. He has made as a resource for you what is in the heavens and earth put together. All of that is there to serve you, for you to benefit from. So I'm here for a purpose and my relationship with Allah, I'm his agent on this earth. Being the agent of Allah on this earth, then I have to follow the instructions from the source, from the principle, from the manufacturer, from the Almighty Allah. And in following those instructions and fulfilling my duty as I go on about my life, then that is the relationship that Allah wants from us. To be good citizens on this earth Mm -hmm. and to fulfill the commandment given to us by Him through Archangel Gabriel all the way to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as a book which is a constitution of mankind, the Quran. Previous prophets also received similar messages Mm -hmm. for their time and their era. 
the era that we have today is the era of the of Islam, the era of Muhammad peace be upon him, and then of the Quran. And as a result, that is where we find our guidance. So the way we take the Quran is the book of manual, the book of operation. How to operate this body <clears throat> and how to fulfill my duty on this earth, what am I required to do in my relationship with Allah, in my relationship with self, and my relationship with not only the human, the, the human humanity, but beyond that, with this vastness of this universe. How should I go about in behaving and conducting myself in fulfilling that? And everything that is what we call worship. That is the relationship with Allah. So the relationship with Allah is not only limited to moments of worship. The way I look after my body is part of worship. When I treat people with kindness, it's part of worship. So it's a lifestyle? It's a lifestyle. And the actual fact, the word deen, in, Islam, in, in Arabic, the word deen, it describes a lifestyle. Okay. It's a lifestyle. It's not a religion. We don't have in the Arabic language the word for religion, per se. Mm-hmm. We don't have. What we have, the Quran describes, in deena inda Allah al-Islam. The way of life with Allah is peace, is Islam. And that is how we should take into. Therefore, my priority number one as a Muslim, mm-hmm. my uh, l- l- mission on this earth is to promote peace. In the deen and Allah islam The way of life to Allah is peace. So promoting peace in all aspects is what I have to do. Peace with Allah, peace with self, and peace with others. Okay, so it's, it starts with the realization that we need His guidance. Yes. And how small we are, but how we've been elevated as agents in, in this world and also to appreciate that without him we won't be alive without him without, we're nothing yes we're Indeed. nothing absolutely yes. so Sheikh Afan, if you can please explain more what it means to be as a human agent in ta- day-to-day life yeah now to go in a day-to-day life mm-hmm. we see that let us take the the message of Islam the, the message of Islam and the prophet of Islam why did he come forth why did, was he sent a messenger Ulmati Allah describes that he came to do four things. It was Almighty Allah who sent amongst them a prophet. Yetlu alayhim ayati. Number one, recites the book of Allah to them, recites the verses of Allah to them. Yetlu alayhim ayati. Wa yuzakihim and purifies them. Number two, purifies them. Wa yu'allimhum al kitaba and teaches them the book. وَالْحِكْمَةِ and wisdom. Let us take these four, one at a time. Reciting the book is basically delivering the message. This is, thou shall do, thou shall do not. So which is the Qur'an? The Qur'an. إِنَّ هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي يَقُمْ This Qur'an guides to what is straight. So the Prophet Islam was, received the message, the verses, and he recited the verses to his companion. What we have today are the recitation of the Prophet of Islam as given to him by Archangel Jibril alayhi salam to mankind. And then the second part is where you zakih him and purify them. Purification is in the character, purifying the character. Tazkiyah, tazkiyah the nafs, purifying self. Purifying character in ethics, morals, conduct, values, principles, standards and the likes. In other words, we have to subscribe to the highest moral conducts and the highest values, human values. Mm-hmm. That is number two. And then he says, وَيُعَلِّمْهُمُ الْكِتَابَ And he taught them the book. Teaching the book is basically coming to, uh, to deduce what are the benefits of it. It's transforming the book from the book of recitation to the book of knowledge. So that is the second part. What I read, do I understand it? Does it make sense? And then the last part, hikmah, wisdom, comes when now we link that knowledge to this universe, we link that knowledge to nature, we link that knowledge to ourselves, and we begin to find the, the pattern, we begin to find results, we begin to see the application of that knowledge. And that is, that is when we acquire the wisdom. Mm-hmm. So those are the four stages that we are here for. We are here to, number one, to get the right knowledge. 
with the right manners mm -hmm. and transforming that knowledge into the ap ap applied knowledge that's going to be beneficial and useful to mankind and to ourselves. So we see that it's all about knowledge and manner. It's about a person, person's character, mm -hmm. as well as the knowledge that they have. And that's why the first verse revealed in Islam was none other than Iqra, read, recite, proclaim. So Muslims are not Muslims. Today we see a lot of people abusing Islam for two reasons. And they are in those four verses. Number one, they lack knowledge. They are ignorant. Or they have chosen to translate Islam differently to the way they like, to suit their own means and their own agenda. Number two, they are not applying the right conduct, moral conduct in their lives. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they do not even qualify to be called Muslims. They are just Muslims by birth. But in practice, they are far, far away from the message. We also like to remind our callers of the number to call in, 2460-2058. And the another number is 2469-4315. We'll take a quick break, Sheikh Hafan. We'll come back with more. Inshallah. This is Radio Sultan of Oman. Live with Sheikh Alfan al Aisri. On, on, let's connect. Let's connect. So, Sheikh Alfan. It also helps when we understand our relation with Allah in comparison to other creatures. So, and you said humans have been elevated as as agents yes. in this world, and uh, and also to take that wisdom and apply it for the the greater good. Uh, how is the relationship with Allah when it comes to His other creation? In, in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, in, in the relationship we have with Allah and in everything we do, Almighty Allah is mm -hmm. basically. Uh, in contact with everybody. Uh, Almighty Allah says, يَسْأَلُهُ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ كُلَّ يَوْمٍ هُوَ فِي شَأْنِ They ask Him, whatever that is, the heavens and earth, they ask Almighty Allah. And every day He's got, uh, He's answering or He's fulfilling the requirements of what people want or what humanity or creatures want. So in, in the relationship with Allah, we understand what we have to do. We have to be driven by our conscience all mm -hmm. the time. In other words, my conscience has to speak to me all the time. Then people may go and question and says, why conscience? We say that when we came, we were pre-programmed. Mm -hmm. We were pre-programmed by the manufacturer, by the, by the designer, Almighty Allah. As he says in the Quran, وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّهَا And the self and the way he perfected it. فَأَلْهَمَهَا And inspired the self. فُجُورَهَا وتقواها, it's wrong doing and it's right doing. So we have been programmed without being taught. The initial part, the inherent nature, in Islam we call it fitra, the innate nature. Which everyone is born Which with. Which everyone is born with. Mm -hmm. You can go to the uh, Amazon jungle. Mm -hmm. We can go to the Sub-Saharan Africa, African Sub-Sahara. You can go to uh, Alaska. You can go to the most, the, the remotest area on earth, in China, in India, anywhere on earth. And people will have that innate nature. No one says that lying is good or killing is good. No one says being unfaithful is good. We all know mm -hmm. that telling the truth is good, preserving life is good, showing mercy to those who are weaker than you is good, protecting each other is good. We all have those innate nature within us. Mm -hmm. But it is the, later on that people choose to reprogram themselves differently, either by the environment or by themselves or through the experience or situations and circumstances. So with that innate nature, our conscience, whenever our conscience speaks to us, Bamir, basically it is activating that innate nature in us. It says, this is what you are programmed to do, but you are choosing to do it differently. So whenever our conscience speaks to us as the guilty conscience, whatever, is because we have derailed ourselves from the mm -hmm. true path, from the right program that we were programmed to do. And as a result, we're being destructive to ourselves and to those around us. 
Is it similar to the concept of when we disconnect from distractions and we listen to our inner voice? Yes, definitely. Is that similar to connecting with our innate? Absolutely. And that is why, indeed, taking moment out to retreat and to listen, to quietly sit and listen, Mm -hmm. is basically to allow the inner voice to speak to us, the conscious voice to come and speak to us, as loud as it is talking, but because of the distractions that you have uh, rightly said, dream, we cannot hear that voice. Mm-hmm. It is overwhelmed by the noise and the distractions of life that and, and the ego that is kicking in all the time to try and uh, uh, acquire the materialistic life. You've mentioned uh, a very important word, Sheikh Alfan, ego. Ego. That comes up a lot. And so, and how can the ego be a barrier in our relationship with Allah? And how can we be aware of it? Yeah. He, the ego, let us understand the ego. Mm-hmm. Number one, ego is very sensitive. And the way ego sees itself, it sees itself as a perfect creation. And yes, there is an element in each individual. Every person has that ego within themselves. It it is uh, It prevails more with men than it is with women. Mm-hmm. Men always ego is what is uh, hurting them a lot, is disturbing them, is troubling them a lot. Mm-hmm. And that ego is basically saying, I am perfect in every aspect of life. Yes, there is a time for perfection, but not in this world, in the other world. Here we are being tested towards that perfection. We are going to test you. We are going to be tested to see how many of you are going to be patient. And in actual fact, when people are tested, their true characters emerge and the ego kicks in because it is being attacked and it wants to be defensive. So when people understand what ego is trying to do, the wise people, those who have elevated themselves to wisdom, number number four, Mm -hmm. they realize what the ego is trying to do and they try on one way to calm down the ego. So we see that, for example, in the uh, Maslow hierarchy of needs, when people reach the self-actualization, they've already gone through all those troubling moments of the ego, mm-hmm. uh, from the basic uh, necessities to belonging to society, and then to fulfill, to fulfill one's needs, proving one, oneself, proving oneself, achievements. So we see people in the age between 20 and 40, it's all about achievements. Mm-hmm. In that achievement, the ego has kicked in wanting to achieve. So they achieve status in, in education, they achieve status at work, they achieve status with wealth, they achieve status with family, getting married, having a house, having kids, etc., etc. Mm-hmm. And they establish themselves. That is the ego, the macho kicks mm-hmm. in. But then after 40, life begins at 40. That is when wisdom begins to kick in. They realize these are just the games. That's why Almighty Allah says in the Quran, حَتَّى إِذَا بَلَغَ أَرْبَعِينَ سَنَةً and when he reaches 40 years of age, قَالَ رَبِّ أَنْ أَشْكُرَ نَعْمَتَكَ الَّتِي أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ He says, oh, oh my Lord, give me wisdom to appreciate and to thank you for the provisions that you have given me, for me and my, my parents. So suddenly people become <coughs> appreciative because now they have reached the self-actualization. And when there is the, the self-actualization, the first thing that kicks in is the humility and humbleness. They are no longer wanting to to be the superstars and the, the macho and, and, and grabbing attention. They realize, you know what? The more knowledge I have, the smaller I believe I am. The ignorant that I realize I am. Because with knowledge, the more you have, the more you know you don't know. And as human beings, if we take, for example, 100%, a barrel or a bottle, 5% is what we know. Mm-hmm. And 5% is what we know that we don't know. And 90% is what we don't know that we don't know. So there is so much that we don't know as human beings. Mm-hmm. And when people reach 40 years old, not everybody, majority mm-hmm. of people, when they reach that, because of the experience, they suddenly realize, you know what? What I've been doing so far is just games. I've been acting. And humans are fantastic actors. We are mm-hmm. acting all the time. Now they realize... Ego now is moderated, ego now <clears throat> is tamed, and they say now ego, take it easy. You don't have to prove yourself. Mm-hmm. Let your actions speak for themselves, observe what people are doing, and just enjoy life.
And so we see people become calmer, quieter, they gain more wisdom, and they're more now, they're good listeners, and they are willing now even to listen to others and observe others. And sometimes they don't have to win every battle mm. of argument. So after 40, we see people beginning to cool down, whether they're parents, whether they're spouse, whether they're leaders, whether they're friends, whether they're peers, whether they're competitors, we see that they begin to calm down. And they realize, you know what, fierce competition that is hurtful, in actual fact, is uh, unhealthy. So they go for the healthy competition rather than destructive competition. Mm -hmm. And is it in a way like realizing the priorities and purpose of life? Yeah, indeed, it's part of it. Mm -hmm. Because they realize, you know what, I've I've been through all the journey and I realize, yes, there is a higher purpose in life than just uh, fighting Mm -hmm. for small stuff. Now they go for higher purposes, absolutely. Excellent. But of course you can achieve that before for it, right? Definitely. <laughs> no, the, and there are people who get who mature before they age, mm-hmm. and there are people on the other side, on the, on the other hand, who even the age of 60, they still haven't matured. Yes. So, but, but 40 normally on average mm-hmm. is when people begin to wake up, and they call it the middle age crisis. Why okay. do they call it middle age crisis? It's simply because they realize, you know what? My values and my priori- my priorities <coughs> are messed up. Mm-hmm. I need <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I need to go and sort out my life. Okay. We remind our colleagues to call in at two four six zero two zero five eight, and also the number two four six nine four three one five. So it's an awakening. A wake-up call, indeed. A wake up it call. is an awakening. And that's why when we, they call it the middle age crisis. Because the, the, is, is that what they call it? Middle age crisis? Yes, yes. Exactly. People wake up and they say, you know what? I, I need to sort out my life. I have been pursuing a wrong direction. I've been pursuing a wrong career. Mm-hmm. I've been in a wrong relationship. I've been abusing my body. I have not been good to my parents, to my family. I've been not good to my, my creator. And suddenly they say, you know what? I need to sort out my life. Mm-hmm. And that is why, because the wisdom is beginning to kick in. Some people listen to that call and they follow it. Other people listen to that call and they ignore it. Yes. And to both people, there are consequences, there are results mm-hmm. that we get to see. And the sooner we listen to that, the better. The sooner indeed, the better. So what is the relationship between ego and loving ourselves? What's the difference? Yes. Loving ourselves, we always have to love ourselves. Because to love yourself is the ability also to love others. If you can't love yourself, you can't love others. Mm-hmm. Loving yourself is basically to appreciate who you are, and uh, not only as a body, but as you appreciate your emotions, your thoughts, your soul, and appreciate yourself, the full self of you. That is, we have to have all the time. The Prophet of Islam said, لا يحقرن أحدكم نفسه you sh- no one should demean himself. Do never demean yourselves. Because you are the agent of Allah, you are the perfection of Allah, you are the gift from Allah. The ego on the other hand is when it says <coughs> territorial. You know when you have territory? Yes. As uh, as men we are hunters. Mm-hmm. This is how we have been wired to be hunters. And as hunters we always have to have territory. Why do you need territory? Because we all want to have that kingdom. And in that kingdom, we want to have possession. And usually when that possession is out of us, the ego kicks in to try and regain that territory and possession. It could be the territory of uh, status. It could be the territory of wealth. It could be the territory of um, position in life. It could be the territory of uh, an opinion, an argument, a belief, a, a point of view. It comes in, in different facets of, uh, of, uh, of interaction. So that ego, to say that I am right, you are wrong, is what is hurtful. I am right, but I stand to be wrong, to be corrected. Mm -hmm. And you are wrong, and you stand to be right. So listening to each other, respecting different point of views, and accepting as they are that we can never agree. And this is why Almighty Allah did to humankind. He created us to be different, so that in our differences, we can complement each other. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ لَجَعَلَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا If your Lord has willed, mm-hmm. He would have made mankind as one nation. وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ And they continue to be different. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ Except those whom Allah has showered mercy with. 
وَلِذَلِكَ خَلَقَهُمْ And in, for that purpose He created them to be different. So in our differences, and when we have healthy competition, improvement is the result. Another verse Almighty Allah says, وَلَوْلَا دَفْعُ اللَّهِ النَّاسَ بَعْضَهُمْ بِبَعْضٍ If it wasn't for people battling with each other, competing with each other, لَفَسَدَتِ الْأَرْضِ This earth mm-hmm. would have turned into ruin. In the absence of competition, people relax. In the absence of competition, creativity disappears. In the absence of competition, improvements doesn't come. So it's only when we are put under pressure as human beings, when we are tested, that we try to do our best. We see that very clearly. Anytime you, took, you put two people and you ask them to compete with each other, they try to bring their best out. Whether it is in sports, whether it is in literature, whether it is in uh, knowledge, whether it is in skills, whether in whatever. That's why in our programs when we have uh, workshops and others, mm-hmm. for us to bring the best out of people, we put them in scenarios and situations where they have to go and compete with each other in a friendly environment, in a safe environment. And we see the best of each emerge. Beautiful. So let's embrace the beauty of the difference and the wisdom behind it. Absolutely. We'll take a quick break. Before of that, remind you of the number to call in, 2460-2058. That's 2460-2058. The other number is 2469-4315. 2469-4315. This is Radio Sultan of Oman. Live with Sheikh Alfano Isri. On, on, let's connect. Let's connect. Welcome back to your Ramadan radio program, Let's Connect. Now, Sheikh Afan, we want to talk more about Allah's mercy and Allah's love. What does it mean when Allah showers us with His mercy and love? Yeah. Uh, in the Quran, Almighty Allah, in many verses, He links between forgiveness and mercy. Inna Allah ghafurun rahim. Wa astaghfirullah inna Allah ghafurun rahim. Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina wa ta'ana. Rabbana waghfir lana. And this is waghfir lana wa rahamna. Mm-hmm. Forgive us and have mercy on us So there are two elements Elements of forgiveness is that as human beings We are fallible We all make mistakes And nobody is perfect It's yes. a statement that we hear Nobody is perfect But then you're going to ask Who wants to be nobody? Mm-hmm. Nobody So we'll, we'll leave nobody to be perfect <laughs> But everybody wants to be somebody So in being somebody We are going to commit mistakes And that is how we were created We only learn through our mistakes the way we began to crawl, the way we began to walk, the way we began to talk, the way we began to act. Everything we did, we started with imperfection. The way we began to write, the way we began to read, the way we began to eat, the way we began to interact, we started poorly. And then we improved slightly to become average, and some people went beyond being average to become masters in whatever they do. And this is a wonderful statement to remember. Anything that is worth doing well, is worth doing poorly the first time. Anything that is worth doing well is worth doing poorly the first time. So we have Mm -hmm. to start from being poor. And whenever we do things wrong, we're going to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So whenever we make mistakes, we have to say, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. With Allah, it's the same thing in our relationship with Allah. There will be times when we're going to make mistakes with Allah. Mm -hmm. When we're going to mess up in our duties. When we become lazy, when we become arrogant, when ego kicks in, when uh, emotions uh, of anger, irritation, frustration kick in, and then we lose the plot and we do something wrong. So Allah says, anytime you do that, all you have to do is come back and say, I'm sorry. And the way to say sorry is to say, I seek you forgiveness. Astaghfirullah. I seek mm-hmm. you forgiveness. Once you've done that, beyond that, in moving forward, you need Allah's mercy. You need His mercy to... Because you are weak. Anyone that is weak needs mercy. And mercy here in Allah's mercy is to say, please look at me with, a, with, a, with an eye of compassion, with an eye of 
as a, as a weak creature because we are very weak as human beings. Mm-hmm. We, uh, to understand how weak we are, a bacteria that cannot even see with a naked eye is enough to knock a person down flat, lying flat bed, in, in, in bed, on bed for about two to three weeks. A bacteria. Mm-hmm. That is how weak we are. A small vein, a small vein in our brain, yeah, is enough to have a, to, to give us a, some tumor or an, uh, some uh, becoming co- uh, unconscious eh? concussion. On that note, Sheikh Afan, we have a call. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Hello. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Reem, how are you? I'm fine, alhamdulillah. Who's with us? Alaykum, Sheikh Khalfan. Wa alaykum as salam, Dorakat. Yes, Halik. Alhamdulillah. This is Hatim al salam. Oh, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Big Hatim. Alhamdulillah. Very interesting topic today. Thank you. Uh, mashallah. I have uh, two questions. Okay. Uh, the first question is about maturity. Yeah. Why does it differ from a person to another? Some people may become matured early, yeah. and some of them uh, delay maybe to the age of 40, 50, or 60 even. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the second question is about uh, uh, envy. Uh, yeah. wh- why do people normally have envy in their hearts, and uh, they, they don't compete in goodness? Good. We see very little people competing in goodness, but a lot of people compete in, in uh, evil, evil uh, deeds. Inshallah. Mashallah. Two good Thank questions. You Thank you. Good questions as Thanks. always. Thank you very Thanks. much. Shukran Hatim, mashallah. So his first question is about maturity. Why does it differ from one person to another? And why does some mature yeah. earlier and yeah. others later? Uh, let us write a word, VABE. V-A-B-E. B-A? V, V for uh, voltage, mm-hmm. or Volkswagen, or for violence. Okay. A is for Alpha. Mm-hmm. Uh, B is for Bravo. E for Echo. Excellent. V is for values. Yeah, let us go for values. When you talk about values, people subscribe to different values. People get influence in their families and as a result, they subscribe to different values. The Prophet of Islam said, Every person on this earth is born with the innate nature that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Then the parents go to influence the person to become somebody else, to subscribe to different school, to subscribe to different values, etc. So you see some families, for example, they subscribe to values of respect, values of achievement, values of working hard, values of uh, anticipating change that is coming and be prepared for it and planning ahead, value for high moral conduct. Mm. And you see some fa- other families, they say, you know what, we don't have it. So we cannot subscribe to values of time because time to us is nothing. So they don't respect time. They do not subscribe to values of cleanliness because they've always been living dirty. Dirty in the terms of clothes because they don't have ability to wash their clothes in their house. They cannot keep it clean all the time. So they don't bother about cleanliness. <clears throat> values of studying because they realize, you know what, we, we didn't fin- I didn't finish school as parents. And my children cannot do it because we were born to be stupid. We were born to be uh, not intellectual. We're not uh, intelligent enough to study. So as a result, the, the children get influenced in the values people subscribe to. And second one is the assumptions. A is for assumptions. Now, when you come to assumptions, everybody has got different assumptions. Assumptions that this is what I understand, me as a person, in relation to my family, in relation to society, in relation to my tribe, in relation to my country, in relation to my beliefs, my assumption is that this is what is going to happen. So we, we make those assumptions. Mm-hmm. yeah. And then B is all about the behaviors. yeah. The behaviors, the, because of our values and our assumptions, then our behaviors begin to get directed in one way. Either we apply, we don't apply, we focus, we don't focus, we exercise, we don't exercise, we study, we don't study, we save, we don't save, etc. And the final E is the expectations, expectation of results. Because of who I am, 
because of my background, because of what I know and what I have, I expect these type of results. I expect to be wealthy. I expect to be knowledgeable. I expect to be promoted. I expect it to fail. I expect it to be nothing. I expect it to be behind. I expect it always to be looked after, whatever it is. Okay. Now, as a result, a lot of people, because of these four things, then we all have our different worlds, the inner world. Mm -hmm. Some people who are lucky enough to wake up and to find clues and to go after the clues, or if some people happen to be to be lucky enough to be in an environment that is supportive, such people mature early. Others who get abused or they abuse their time and their knowledge because they've always been uh, lagging behind and being uh, uh, not serious about their lives, you see their maturity levels is quite delayed. And that is basically the element of maturity. So my suggestion, if you want our children to mature early, we need to begin to give shift them from being dependent to being independent. And this is another thing we have to learn. There are three levels. Mm -hmm. There is dependence, independence, and interdependence. And uh, this was uh, talked about in uh, Stephen Covey's book. So being dependent... A lot of children are dependent all the way to the age of 6, 7, maximum 10. But after the age of 10, they can qualify to become independent mm -hmm. if we allow them and if we support them and we begin to encourage them to become independent. Dependent in their thoughts, depending on their choices, depending in time management, independent. So they need to become independent. They have to be responsible. To shift from being dependent to being independent is about responsibility. It so, shifts. So not being too overprotective. Not being too overprotective. Mm -hmm. Not to over supervision. So we need to shift the responsibility from parents to children. If we start at the early age, even at the age, as early as seven years old, we can begin to allow them to practice that element of independence under the supervision. But after the age of 10, we need to begin to allow them a bit of room for them to go and practice that independence and expect that they will make, they will make some mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's a fact of life. We need to give them that freedom to do that. And then to reach maturity, to become interdependent. In other words, <clears throat> I've got something to offer and I can also benefit from others. So the interdependence is what Allah wants us to be. Allah is the one who made you his agent on this earth. And he elevated you above each other. Why? So that you may serve each other. You may need each other. You may support mm -hmm. each other. That is the interdependence. And people in actual fact, they only become useful to themselves and to society when they reach the element of interdependence. But if they're independent, then it's only about themselves. My way or the highway. My way know. or the highway. Mm -hmm. But interdependence, I can benefit from you and you can benefit from me. And we all need each other. So I think that is maturity. Why mm -hmm. some people reach maturity early? Because they get, they get that environment or they are put in an environment where they take responsibilities early. So mm -hmm. one thing we have to learn is to become responsible. And with responsibility, it's good to repeat this statement. If it has to be, it is up to me. If it has to be, it is up to me. Okay. So if I want to be responsible, anytime I can choose to be responsible. And how do I know people are responsible? To know people who are responsible, they don't do three things. The dependent people do three things. Mm -hmm. In independent people stop doing those three things. What do people, dependent people do? Number one, they blame. Because game. there is a blame game. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, I did not do this because my boss did not allow me. My, my parents did not give me an opportunity. Uh, I'm a failure because I didn't get the good education. I'm a, they always blame somebody. Mm -hmm. Somebody. Somebody is responsible for my mistakes. They blame. Two, they criticize. They criticize successful people, unsuccessful people. They criticize the system. They criticize the environment and everything. Mm -hmm. And number three, they justify why they are failures. Responsible people don't, don't blame, don't criticize, and don't justify. And they take responsibility. By taking responsibility, themselves. naturally you stop doing those three things. You mm -hmm. say, it is me. Mm -hmm. I am responsible for everything that happens to me.
Excellent. So to remind about VABE, you said it's values, assumptions, behaviors, and expectations. Yes. And we can, it's an opportunity as well to evaluate ourselves with these areas. Yeah. So we'll take a quick break, then we'll come back to the second question. Inshallah. Radio, Sultan of Oman, 9... Live with Sheikh Alfan al Isri On, on, let's connect. Let's connect. Welcome back to Let's Connect. You can call us in at 24 Six zero two zero five eight and another number two four six nine four three one five. Sharafan, we left off on the second question, which was about envy. Why do people have envy in their heart? Envy is a disease. Mm-hmm. It's a disease of a heart. Almighty Allah says, "Women sharri hasid in the hasid." And protect us from the evil of those who are envious in, in whatever they envy. Envy is basically to wish someone who has go, gained something for that whatever they have gained to disappear, to lose whatever they have gained. Mm-hmm. Whether it is uh, materialistic, whether it is knowledge, whether it is status, whatever, is to wish that they would be worse than they are themselves. It's a disease simply because of self-esteem is very low to such people. They are, they don't feel, they do not value themselves. You talked about earlier about loving self. Yes. Such people don't love themselves. In actual fact, such people have a lot of resentment and anger within themselves. Mm-hmm. They are angry with themselves. They are angry with their relatives. They are angry with the society. They are angry with the world. They are angry with everything. And that resentment is what is making them behave in such a manner. And they, they, they are people who, mashallah, they have everything. Still, mm-hmm. they envy others. Again, ego maybe kicks in that I don't want anybody to be better than me. Yeah, it's a negative way of competing. It's an evil way of competing. So when such people have that, the first thing you have to feel is sorry for such people because it's a disease, it's an illness. They don't know how much harm are they doing to themselves. Allah in the Quran, in the Quran, Almighty Allah says, "Am yahsudun al nasa ala ma atahum Allah min fadli." Or do such people envy what Allah has given to others? So the one distributing everything on this earth, the provisions, is not any. Is Allah? Allah chooses whom He gives and whom He doesn't. Is Allah? And Allah is so fair in the way He distributes. With Allah, there are no favoritism. There is no mm-hmm. nepotism. Allah says in the Quran, "Kullan numidu." To all we provide with with ample supply, unlimited supply. No middle. Haulai wa haula. This group and that group. Min ata irabik. Provision from you, Lord. Wa makana ata urabika mahdura. And provision from you, from you, Lord, were never limited to a particular group. In other words, Allah provides everybody equally. But it's up to people and how proactive they are. To pursue what Allah has prepared for them. The proactive people get it. Mm-hmm. The passive people get nothing. So a few criteria to identify people with envy. Number one, they are passive. In other words, they don't want anybody to, to get... They, they are not moving themselves to pursue mm-hmm. the goodness. Number two, being passive, they are also bankrupt. They are bankrupt with morals, moral values. Number three, they are unhappy with themselves. In actual fact, it's beyond being unhappy. They are actually angry with themselves. 
and being mm-hmm. angry with themselves, they go and transform that anger towards others. And number four, such people will always, will always be looking at a, a cup that is half empty. What is it that I don't have, that people have? Why do they have it and I don't have it? And that is what killing people, because it's an illness, it's a disease. And what we suggest is that when you see such people, mm-hmm. be careful with them. Do not expose or do not share with them everything that you know and everything that you have. Because they could be harmful to you. Mm-hmm. And that's why the Prophet of Islam says, أَقْضُوا حَوَائِجَكُمْ بِالْكِتْمَنْ Whenever you are pursuing your goals and your ambitions, some of them pursue them with a bit of secrecy, with confidentiality. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ ذِي نِعْمَةٍ مَحْسُودٍ for everyone that has got some provisions will always find people to envy, to envy them. Mm-hmm. So we need to be careful. And they might actually step in the way. They may step in the way. They may uh, disrupt the mm-hmm. process of going to achieve whatever we want to achieve. And then they could be harmful. We need to be careful. So if we link the concept of envy, how is that linked to how strong the relationship is with Allah? You now such people, the relationship with Allah, they, they have no trust in Allah. Mm-hmm. They have no trust in Allah And what they are doing is that they are, they are moving in the opposite direction To what Allah is asking them to do Allah is saying that Support each other, be successful And be be happy when you see others mm-hmm. Becoming successful Yeah, Participate, uh, celebrate And uh, uh, congratulate people Who are becoming uh, happy And becoming successful And these people what they do is the opposite When they see someone failing they make a lot of noise. They celebrate failure of others. Mm-hmm. That is another quality you see them. They celebrate failures of others. In actual fact, they go and publicize. Do you know such and such people? This is what has happened to them. They deserve it. And they feel good about it. It's contrary to what Allah is asking them to do. Commonly, people say that there's lots of envy in society. Yes. Or we, we, we talk about it as hasad. So how can we overcome that? We've been given a, a complete chapter in the Quran. Mm-hmm. You see, in Almighty Allah always uh, gives us formulas for success. At the same time, He gives us the antivirus. We call them mm-hmm. the antivirus. The final two chapters in the Quran, chapter of Al Falaq and chapter of Al Nas, the, mm-hmm. the, the final two chapters. The first one, the chapter of Al Falaq, is all about seeking protection from Allah. Again, we come back to the subject how much do you need Allah? Mm-hmm. Seeking pr- protection from Allah from uh, from harm that comes from outside, external harm. Mm-hmm. Surah Al Falaq. Surah Al Nas is seeking protection from Allah from harm that comes from within, from inside, and that is about thoughts, about worries, about anxieties, about uh, all, all the way to uh, people who become suspicious of everything. It's also a disease that comes from within. The self-limiting beliefs. and uh, yes. yeah. So we need to seek help from Allah, from the outer world and from the inner world. The evil part of the outer world and the evil part of the inner world. Mm-hmm. And in so doing, this we are told to repeat those chapters in the morning and in the evening. Before we leave our homes, we have to recite them. So basically, we are activating the antivirus. We are activating, if we use the, the language of the computers, the firewall okay. to protect us as we go out. Because when you go out, you have to say, Tawakkal to Allah. In mm-hmm. Allah, I put my trust. And then I recite those chapters before I go out. Three times, three times. Basically, I reconfirm. This is what I want you, Almighty Allah, today to protect him from. Okay. And then move on with life. And once you do that, do not pay attention to mm-hmm. such people, they'll do you no harm as long as you are protected. By Allah. Yeah. Excellent. Now, how can we strengthen our relationship with Allah? What steps can we do to get closer? In getting closer to Allah, there's only one thing we can do. Al-Dhikrul mm-hmm. Kathir. Al-Dhikrul Kathir. Remembering Allah a lot. And everything we do in life reminds us of Allah. Mm-hmm. It does not mean that uh, I become... Uh, useless in society and I have to go and retreat myself in an, a, a, in a monastery or in a, pra- a place of worship and then uh, I have to isolate myself from society. No. Mm-hmm. I do that part of my day that is only a few hours when I'm not interacting with people like nights or like a few few minutes a day to go and uh, do the prayers. Other times I have to be active in a society. So 
in, in so doing, when, when I keep my relationship with Allah and I'm remembering Allah a lot, when I see anything on this earth, it reminds me of Allah. Mm-hmm. When I look at a tree, from the root to the trunk to the branches to the leaves, we are told leaves of trees, there are no two leaves who look alike. If we take flakes of snow, there are no two flakes of snow who look alike. If we take anything in life, we can see the majestic of Allah's creation. The way we breathe, the way we walk, the way we talk, the way we're created. Everything we see around us reminds us of Allah. So when we keep always our mind active in looking for signs and putting those signs to good use, to knowledge, to wisdom, to application, then we are realizing that we are part and parcel of this magnificent universe in this setup as it is, mm-hmm. and we are actually felt in harmony with what is going around. That's why Almighty Allah says, the ones who are closer to Allah, and the ones who fear Allah the most, and who understand the, uh, the glory of Allah, are the scholars, people mm-hmm. who endowed with knowledge. إِنَّمَا يَخْشَ اللَّهَ مِنْ عِبَادِي الْعُلَمَاء the ones who fear Allah, the one who also appreciates Allah better, amongst his servants are the scholars. Scholars, it's not only the scholars of Islam, mm. but also scholars of nature, scholars of science and others. Because they go to see his true secrets in the way he created. Mm-hmm. Allah elevates those amongst you who believe those endowed with knowledge levels higher. Why levels higher? Because they got to see more of Allah's secret in the creation that He has. And that reminds them that in reality they will all come to the same conclusion. This universe cannot be without one supreme called Allah. And that's why we also always ask for Allah to grant us beneficial knowledge as well. Absolutely. Knowledge is very important because it leads you and it guides mm-hmm. you to understanding Allah better, to appreciate Allah as well. Sheikh, then how can we express our love to Allah? So we've, we got closer to Allah and we feel connected to Allah. Um, are there certain acts, whether it's of worship or lifestyle, that, that pleases Allah, that we can express our love to Him? Yes. Just read the Quran. Mm-hmm. By reading the Quran, naturally you're going to find the right answers. And when you find those answers, pursue those answers. If you haven't read the Quran, get a copy of one. Mm-hmm. And uh, Quran is not a book of Muslims And it's not a book of worship It's a book of mankind It's a constitution of life It's an encyclopedia It's a book of wisdom uh, And it's a book of life It's a book of stories It's a book of law It's a book of everything You have nothing to lose Read it Try to understand it Try to see what does it say And when you read the Quran Read it as it, as it, it is an open letter to you From Almighty Allah And he is only talking to you mm-hmm. What is he telling you? Find out. And if you're sincere in seeking, knowing what Allah wants to tell you, you will find answers there. And maybe in future chapters we can talk about people who sought some answers and they got them in the Quran. Beautiful. On that note, we'll discuss more about the Quran tomorrow, inshallah. Thank you very much, Sheikh Al Fan. From all of us here at the radio program Let's Connect, we remind you that we are. Live on the air from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And repeats 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. From all of us here, we're Sheikh Afan al and Safiya Al-Habsi, your host, Rima Udiya. Ma'as-salamu.